Hello and welcome back. Recently, I shared a video on how to remove shine from a portrait photo using the patch tool. Today, I will share another way of removing shine by using adjustments only. This is particularly useful when you don't have a good area to patch from. It also gives a bit more control and a more natural outcome. So here is the image from the previous video. Let me enable the changes we did last time to see what we got. Pretty cool end result. Let me disable it and see how we can achieve a similar result. Let's start by duplicating the original layer. Next, I will apply a mask as I only want to focus on the shine area. I will invert the mask, which results in nothing being shown from this duplicated layer. If I disable the underlaying layer, we can see our canvas becomes empty. Perfect. Now I'm going to enable the original image again and paint with white in the mask we just created, on the areas with the shine. If I disable the original image, we can now see what our mask has selected. Excellent. Let me enable back the original layer. So basically the idea is to match the areas we masked with the image. First adjustment I will add is a brightness and contrast adjustment. I will drop down the contrast as much as I can and lower the brightness until we have a level that gets rid of the shine. This is not really the end result we are looking for. We need to adjust it in a way it blends in with the image. Let's use a curves layer and move it under the brightness and contrast adjustment. Ok, two things I want to do now. First, make sure the areas blend in better and second, get some color back. I will start with the master channel to set the correct brightness. By increasing the shadows and lowering the highlight, we flatten the image and the shine looks much better. A little increase in the midtones, which will get back a bit of depth. Now, to get some color back, I miss the reds, so let's increase the midtones in the red channel. That looks already much better. You might notice that the shines are a little bit purplish. So let's decrease the blue values in the blue channel. Excellent. Don't worry, we probably cannot make it perfect in this step. Let's close the curves layer and select the image with the shine mask. I will open up the blend options and I will change the blend range of the underlaying layer. So the changes we did will gradually increase from the shadows to the highlights. Let me turn it off to see the effect of our changes. Nice. We have dimmed down the bright white areas to a more grayish color, which removed the shine. The next step is to add color back so it matches and blends in with the rest of the image. The selective color adjustment is a good tool for this. As I only want to modify the colors, I will put the blend mode of the selective color adjustment to color. Also, the selective color adjustment should only apply to the shine areas we have masked. So I will use the duplicate linked action on the mask and move this duplicate to the selective color adjustment. Because I use the linked duplicate, any changes I would make in the future would also apply to this layer. Time to play with the color. I'm going to start with the whites. Increasing the reds and the yellows here already makes the blend better. From now on it's a little bit of fine tuning based on what you see. Usually the neutrals can be adjusted slightly together with the reds. Have a look at that, we just removed the shine. Let me select both layers and disable them, so we can see the before. When I enable them back, what a difference. Before I leave you, let me share a couple of tips on how to fine tune this method. One thing you can do, is to change the blend range of the first layer. 
you can basically control how much of the original shine should stay. Keep in mind though, after you change the blend range, you probably have to adjust the colors again, especially if you lower the brightness in the shine. Here is another tip. Sometimes it is difficult to see whether the adjustments we just did have a smooth result and whether the colors match correctly. An easy way of checking this is by adding a fill layer with 50% gray and set its blend mode to luminance. This usually creates a quite flat result on which is difficult to see what is happening. For that reason, I'm going to add a curves layer. In the curves layer, I'm going to make sure that the beginning and the end point match the curve. Perfect. We see a lot more now. To really spot the problems, I can change the blend mode to color dodge or negation. In this case, I prefer the negation blend mode as it is easier to look at and to find issues. As you see, we did a pretty good job. No real spots coming out. Let me disable the selective color adjustment and you can immediately see that the shines are not matching with the rest of the image. Let me enable it back and play with it so we can see how it affects this control layer. If I increase the yellows, you notice immediately how this control layer reacts to it. The highlight areas are not matching, which are the shine areas we are modifying. Notice how the image reacts when I make changes in the selective color adjustment. What you want to achieve in here is that the end result should be homogeneous and nothing stands out. If that's the case, you have a nice color match and a blend. You can also adjust the curves layer to brighten things up and you will see how this shows up. A final tip for the coloring is to add a color balance adjustment. Of course do not forget to copy the mask. Depending on the situation you can either do some minor adjustments in here to make the color really fit in. Or we can set the blend mode of it to luminosity. This gives a bit more control on the brightness of the shine areas. Let me turn on the control layers and see the effect of my changes I just did. As you see, the shines are a bit bluish, which indicates they are brighter than the rest of the image. So I can go back to my adjustments, in this case the selective color adjustment, and fine tune it until I have this nice greenish color back in the shine areas. This looks about right. When I turn off the control layers, the end result is just perfect. I hope you like the steps and the tips I showed in this video to remove shine on your photos. This method requires a bit more experimentation to find the right balance. And when you do find the right balance, the end result will be astonishing. Thanks again for watching and if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.